Hello everyone and welcome to our video today. I hope that you've all had a good half term and have enjoyed a week with no schoolwork to do. I bet your parents really loved that. Now there's quite a bit of news for you today. I have received some lovely things from some of you and I need to say a really big thank you. So first, a big thank you to Ben for the wonderful drawing that he shared with me. Look at this. I think it's amazing. Great work, Ben. It's really good. Then I received some lovely cards from Karen, Carsten and Karis. Now those were a real encouragement to me and I can see that you took lots of time to do them. So thank you so much for doing that. And there's a big thank you to all of you who joined in our Zooms. It was great to see you. You have no idea how special it was to see so many of you and to be able to talk to you. It's been amazing and I hope that you enjoyed them as much as we did. Now, if you haven't been in one yet, there is still time. So don't worry, there is more coming up and we'll let your parents know when they're happening. Finally, I need to thank all of you who entered Debbie's shopping challenge from the video a few weeks back. It was so close. Her shopping cost six pounds and 62 pence. And Clara was the nearest guess. Clara really enjoyed her prize, but well done to all of you who took part. Now, on to our video for today. We're starting a new theme and it all centers on a very interesting character in the Bible. And we can learn a lot from this person. But before we get to that, let's have a look at our latest Leaders Challenge. Are you ready for this? So, good evening everybody and welcome to our Uber Leaders Challenge. So, we have Tom and Will and we have a really good challenge for them. Now, unfortunately, there are jelly babies that are drowning in baked beans and Tom and Will are going to rescue the jelly babies from the baked beans using their teeth. Are you ready? You have one minute to see how many jelly babies you can rescue. Tom, you better remove your glasses. I'm, re I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Your time starts now. the most jelly babies. Would you now like to count them? Tom's okay. I got 12. Will has got, got 12. 11. I got 11. Tom yes. got 11. So I declare <laughs> that Will oh. is the winner of the Jelly Baby Rescue. So Will, as your prize, you may eat all those lovely jelly babies and Tom, maybe yes. you would like to eat all those lovely beans. I'll see about that one. Okay, so 
So that is all for our Uber Leaders Challenge, the Jelly Baby Rescue. Thanks very much, Tom and Will. So you can see that I have some special guests here with me this afternoon. I have Matt and Eden. Would you like to say hello? Hi. Do you want to say hi? And hi, Eden. And I also have Toby. Hello, Toby. Hello, everybody. I'm here. Hi. Yes, yes we can see hi. you, Toby. Are you going to be good? Yes, I'm going to zoom. Okay. Zoom. All right. Now, this afternoon, Toby and I are going to have a bit of a game with Eden and Matt. And we're going to play 20 questions. Now, Matt, your job is to ask Toby and myself some questions and you have to work out which Bible character we are going to be thinking about just from asking us your 20 questions. Have you got Ooh. that? Um, sounds difficult, but we can do it. Okay. It's hard. Yeah, now, she says it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> we are only allowed to answer yes or no, aren't we, Toby? Yes, yes or no, no, no. And that's quite easy for you, isn't it, Toby? Yes, because I got my voice now. Yes, okay. And if Toby gets stuck, then I will help. That's Is it right. a man? Toby? Sorry, Toby. Yes, it's a man. Um, is it in the New Testament? No, it's not in the New Testament. Is it, Toby? I was going to say that. I was going to say no. Okay, you need to be quicker, Toby. Next question, okay. Matt. <laughs> it's, um, so that means it's in the Old Testament. Um, is is this person in Genesis? Is that the first one? No. No, 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 no. 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 Okay. Whew. Um, is this person a prophet? Do you know, Toby? Wow. That would depend what a prophet is. No, <laughs> this person was not a prophet. Oh, uh, that was how I was going to say that. Yeah. I was going to say that. Okay. Gosh. Next this question. Is, is this person a king? No, nope. this person was not a king. Oh, gosh. Concentrate. Okay. Concentrate, Matt. Concentrate. I'm concentrating. <laughs> um, do you have any questions? Is this person... Um, was this person surrounded by lions at some point? <gasps> I hope not. No. No. Okay. No. No. Is this person? This is this is tough. This is tough. Yeah. It's not so difficult. It's not so the difficult. The whole Bible we've got it. We've got here. Um, yeah. Even Eden thinks it's tough. Okay. So was this person in a whale? What? Is that a whale? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Whale. Honestly. No. Okay. Um. Did this person go on a mountain? Up a mountain, like high up on a mountain? Uh, no, no, he didn't. No. No, 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 no. Okay, did this person talk to God? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Did this person lead the Israelites? I think that's the difficult one. Okay. Okay. That's the difference. I don't think so. Matt, okay, what's what, what? You're halfway through. We will give you a clue, shall we, Toby? Okay, yeah, we need to help him a bit. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue here. Think bricks. 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 What do bricks do? Do they build walls? Yeah. Okay. Was this person responsible for building a wall? Why? He saw them, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. What do you mean, sort of? You're supposed to answer. You're supposed to yes. answer yes or no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, 
Now I just have to remember this person's name, right? Yep, yep. yep. Did this person's name start with a J? No. No. Oh gosh. Gosh. <laughs> um uh did this person's name start with a um gosh, I'm struggling. What? What? You, you, <laughs> you need to help your dad a little bit. Help me out. You're not cheating. Hey, you guys have to give me a number. You your phone, are you, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't cheating. He's cheating. <laughs> Oh, oh I'm, not, I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm in the Bible right now. Oh. <laughs> okay, wait. I've got a question. I've got a question. Yeah. Is this does does the person's name start with a, a Z? No. 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 Um, You've got five left. Okay. Does this Did person's you know name start with an H? No. No. Okay. Does this person's name start with a an N? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is this person's name Nehemiah? Yes. We got it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you got it. What do you think, Toby? Well, it took him a while, but he got there in the end. I think he's quite clever. Yeah. Although, I think he had some help. <laughs> oh, Matt, thank you so much. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> you did it. You're a genius. Well thank done. Thank you so much. Right. Good thank job. you. Bye. Well done. Bye. 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 Nehemiah lived in Old Testament times, around 450 years before Jesus. He was one of God's special people, the Israelites, but he wasn't living in Jerusalem. He was living in the land of Persia in the city of Susa. This was because the Israelites had been carried off by their enemies and made to live in lands that were not their home. This is called living in exile, and many of God's people lived like that before Jesus came. Nehemiah loved Jerusalem and longed to go back there. He had a very important job in Persia. He was the cupbearer to the king, and this meant that he had the very special job of keeping the king safe. The book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament tells the story of what happened to him and his people. And this is the story that we will be sharing with you. God's Story Nehemiah So part of God's story is about a guy named Nehemiah, and it goes like this. Remember God's family? They were called the Israelites because they lived in, you guessed it, Israel. But some of them lived far away from their home, and one of those guys was Nehemiah. He lived in Persia and worked for the king. One day, his brother told him that a city in Israel called Jerusalem was suffering, and many people there weren't following God anymore, and their city wasn't in very good shape. Nehemiah cried, God, you are wonderful, but your family's home is in trouble. Please help us. When I serve the king his wine today, make him pleased with me and have him do what I ask. Later, when Nehemiah served the king's wine, the king noticed that Nehemiah looked sad. So the king asked why. Nehemiah told him about Jerusalem and asked if he could go back to rebuild the wall. The king could have killed Nehemiah for asking to leave, but instead he said go. He even helped. That's because God heard Nehemiah's prayer and answered it. So what did Nehemiah do? 
when he heard about the terrible state of Jerusalem, the city that he loved, which was really important to God's people. Well, first of all, he sat down and wept. That was really big crying, real sadness. He felt broken and sad when he heard the news about Jerusalem. Then he fasted and he prayed. Nehemiah probably went without food, possibly for several days. And during that time, he would have spent time really seeking God, crying out to him from his sadness and distress. Nehemiah didn't just pretend that everything would suddenly get better. He saw things how they were and he reacted in a way that was okay. It was okay for him to be very sad and distressed and then to fast and pray. So what does this mean for us? What can we learn from this? Let's go over to Amy and she will help us understand this a little better. Thanks Elizabeth. Now as we heard in our story, when Nehemiah was really sad, he wept and then he prayed. He spoke to God about those things that made us really sad. Now, I don't know about you, but I found over the last year, I've tried really hard to focus on all of the things that I'm really thankful to God for. And I've tried to pray and thank God for all of even the tiniest things because it's been really hard time. And it helps us to stay really positive if we're being really thankful. However, it's also really important that we do just like Nehemiah, bring our sadnesses to God. He is there for us, he cares about us, and he cares about those things that make us really sad too. So we're gonna do a prayer activity together now, and you're going to need a bottle, a jug of water, and also a Bible. And we're going to be looking at the verse, Psalm 56, verse eight. Now, you can do this with your family. Um, Tom's not here at the moment, so it's just me. I'm doing this by myself, but you can do it with all of your family if everybody's around and would like to join in. You're going to sit all together and go around and share some of the things that are making you really sad at the moment. So for me, it might be that I haven't been able to hug any of my grandparents for about a year now. And that makes me really sad. And I would share that with my family and then I would pour a little bit of water into my bottle. And then somebody else would read the verse from the Bible that we're going to think about, Psalm 56 verse eight. And it says, you keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. And then I take it in turns with other members of my family to share some of the other things that are making us sad. Someone might say, I'm really sad that I haven't been able to see my friends at school. And we pour more water into the bottle. And again, we'll read the verse from the Bible that says, you keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected all of my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. And we'll keep going until this jar is full of our sorrows, of the things that bring tears to our eyes, of things that make us feel really sad. We can bring all of our sadnesses to God and he wants to hear about those things because God wants to come, he wants to put an arm around you and he wants to bring you comfort. It says in the Bible that God is our comforter and God wants to be that for all of us throughout all of our sadnesses. 
I'm gonna pray for us all now and then maybe you'd like to have a go at this activity with your family a little bit later. Father God, thank you that you care about us so much. Thank you that even when we feel sad, you want to hear about it. Lord, please come and be the joy in our lives and bottle up all of our sadness, all of our tears and take it away from us, Father. Thank you that you are everlasting, that you are our comforter forever. Amen. Thank you, Amy. I think that was really helpful. Sometimes we do need to be reminded that it is okay to bring all our sadness to God, just as Nehemiah did in that story. We need to remember that all our sadness and worries are important to God. He is able to help us and comfort us through them all. We have a big God who cares so much for us. It is okay to tell him that we are sad and in need of his comfort. After all, he is a God who is big, strong and mighty. Ah, uh, now, that brings a song to mind. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty
Well, that was great. If you want to hear more songs like that, you can find them on YouTube. Just search for Go Fish Worship Songs and you can enjoy them yourself. Well, that's just about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video that we've put together for you. And don't forget about the prayer activity that Amy shared. You might like to get together with your family and to do that over the coming week. And I hope that it will be helpful to you. Now we will be meeting up for a Zoom next Sunday when we will be having some fun together and learning a little bit more about the character of Nehemiah. So have a good week and we look forward to seeing you all in the Zoom next Sunday. Take care everyone and God bless. See you soon.